I'm at the Laterno University. Um, it's a place where it talks a lot about building stories and having the story built here. And I like to actually think of my life that way as a, a book uh, that God is writing. And there's got a bunch of chapters in it. And I'm old enough now, there's been a lot of chapters written and this is just the most recent one. Um, but I want to just kind of talk about how other chapters God has written have led me to this point. Uh, I'll go back, I'm not going to go all the way back to my mother's womb because that would take a long time. But I'll start uh, college because that makes sense, I'm at a, in, at a university. When I went to school it was a place called the uh, United States Air Force Academy. And I didn't go there as a believer in Christ. I simply went there for a selfish reason to fly airplanes because it sounded really cool. Um, and not only that, they would pay you to do it. So that sounded even more cool. Um, so that, that door was open. I won't say God opened it because I wasn't a believer at the time, but I look back and say, yeah, I imagine he did have a hand in that because of what was gonna happen. Uh, while there, it, it uh, met a lot of my, exceeded my expectations actually. Um, but it was very difficult, uh, particularly academics. I did not do very well in my engineering studies at the Air Force Academy. I was a mechanical engineering major there. I absolutely loved it. I worked very hard um, because I wanted to be uh, an Air Force aviator and serve a career in the Air Force, um, but it didn't go well. I'm a slow processor. This, this computer up here is um, operating in kilobytes instead of uh, terabytes went very, very slow, and you did not have a lot of time to study at a place like the Air Force Academy. So that resulted in very low grades for me. So much so that um, I wasn't sure I was really gonna graduate from that place. But God put somebody in my life uh, as a freshman, a fellow named Rick Burgess, who invited me to Bible study there. And I went to Bible study f uh, for several weeks and heard about the gospel. I was brought up as a Lutheran, so I'd heard about Jesus, heard about God, knew about God, and knew about the gospel, but it certainly wasn't personal. And during uh, these Bible studies at the academy, it became very personal. Like, I became aware that I was a sinner. Um, I needed a Savior, and that was the first time that had happened in my life. And through a series of different meetings and, and uh, encounters, um, I became convicted that I need to know Christ. And so I gave him my life as a freshman there. Uh, changed my approach to everything. It changed my goals. I wasn't really just about flying uh, and being an aviator in the Air Force anymore. I wanted to figure out how could I honor God in the Air Force. And so began a journey of, of trying to do that. God put people in my life, um, mentors in my life, fellow believers in my life to help with that. But one thing he didn't do for me that I really hoped he would do was improve my grades because uh, those stayed terrible. Um, all the way into my junior year, uh, I got to a point where I was realized that on my own effort, sheer force of will and hard work and study, which is, was my approach, I was not probably going to graduate. This brain and this processor wasn't adequate. And that was uh, one of the most profound lessons in my life to that point, because it was one of who are you depending on? Are you depending on yourself? Are you going to learn to depend on God who, who saved you? And uh, it basically put me on my knees and said, Lord, uh, if you want me to graduate from the Air Force Academy and go on to be a career in the Air Force, then you're going to have to do it through me. I can't do it on my own. So that, uh, I guess that really changed my approach to um, not how hard I worked. I, I continued to work hard, but who I was trusting in for that work. And a miracle actually happened in my grades. In, in the space of a couple months, it went up a full uh, grade point. And um, I cannot explain that to this day any other way than God did that because he had some other things in mind. Uh, and so graduation actually did happen. Uh, and then uh, 10 or so years of flying in the Air Force, I flew as a, a backseater in F-4s and F-15 aircraft. Um, Went to a lot of different schools, did a lot of different things I never knew or thought I would do. And again, God showed his hand in, in accomplishing each of those works and putting me in different uh, situations that were very difficult, just like the academy was. But I was forced to trust in him again. And uh, eventually led to a school called the Test Pilot School. And um, he also opened a door for me to study for a master's degree, which was another miracle because I had a transcript that didn't merit that. I should not have been in grad school studying engineering. God opened that door. And it actually went uh, very well, as did test pilot school and a, and a set of flying opportunities that were uniquely 
a unique blend of engineering and flying together. And this was all like <laughs> um, 30 years ago, so I had no idea at that time that there might be a chance to teach this stuff one day. It just was a really neat opportunity. Um, and so after about 12 years of flying and flight test, uh, my Air Force career took another turn and went into something called acquisition, which is the research, design, development, test, delivery, production of weapon systems for the military. Um, so it's like senior design on steroids, essentially. And so I did that for another um, 15, uh, almost 20 years in the Air Force. Uh, again, a whole bunch of uh, very remarkable opportunities. It wasn't flying anymore, but it was dealing with aircraft and weapon systems uh, that the Air Force needed. And it was equally challenging, fascinating, and some situations that, again, um, they were like unsolvable problems. Uh, a V-22 uh, tilt rotor aircraft that was destined for uh, cancellation that had to be recovered and made into a healthy program. And God would put in, me into situations like this that, again, I knew <laughs> there's no way I can do this with my skills, my background, my education. Um, and I would watch God do things through regular people like myself. And so these are some of the types of chapters that God put me in in the Air Force. And um, along the way, of a verse that really hit home was from Mark 10, 27. It says, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. He put that verse on my heart uh, when I was struggling with grades at the academy. And it just kept getting reinforced um, assignment by assignment throughout my Air Force career, which ended up being 34 years long. So a, a long chapter called the Air Force that had a bunch of mini chapters in it. And each one of those was another chance to see what God could do through um, a regular person trying to trust in him. And also taught me a lot about the people he could put in your life to uh, walk that journey with you, to mentor you, and for you to pour into. So that, that idea of mentoring and um, investing in other lives was really a big part of the Air Force journey. You did everything as a team. And so the higher and higher you got in rank, the more and more people you were able to pour into and influence. So towards the latter stage of um, our Air Force career, my wife and I, um, began to think, well, what's going to be the next chapter after this? Because um, we really love serving the nation. We love the uh, idea of protecting freedom, protecting the freedom to worship Christ, to pursue your dreams, and to invest in um, people along the way it meant everything to us. But we, we didn't know anything else besides the Air Force. And so uh, we basically had a clean slate. Um, and we asked God over a period of about a year and a half to just uh, guide us to what might be a next chapter. And so we considered a number of things. Um, one of them was not really teaching at a university because I didn't have a transcript that really merited that. And I didn't have a PhD either. I just had a, a master's degree. Um, but some other doors that we were knocking on were not opening. And so uh, it came down to a point where uh, I thought, you know, academics, I always loved engineering. I think I said that earlier. Um, and I even pursued teaching at the Air Force Academy at one point. But again, my, my grades didn't really allow that. But it was an interest. And I certainly loved uh, aircraft. I loved engineering. And I loved investing in people. And I said, well, why not just see if there's some university opportunity out there? So um, about three and a half years ago, it was as, as simple as Google. <laughs> Googled. Um, Christian universities with an engineering program return. And about 30 some universities showed up and Liz Letourneau was one of them. And Letourneau and another one actually had a posting for a, a master's only engineering instructor. So my wife and I looked at that and said, why not just, just knock on that door and see what happens? And that's when God brought uh, Dr. Scott Anson, the department chair of mechanical engineering, into my life. Uh, we had a chat on the phone, and he made it very clear right off the bat that, uh, well, first he said, why do you want to do something like this? Because <laughs> it didn't look like it fit my background and my experience. And I said, well, it exactly fits that, because it's been, um, a, uh, my Air Force life has been investing in other people in the areas of things I like, like engineering and like um, aircraft. And um, I would just love to continue doing that for young people. And so he said, okay, come out and uh, we'll show you Letourneau. And he gave us uh, 
my wife and I, two days of an absolutely fantastic uh, tour where he uh, helped bring Letourneau to life, which is introducing us to faculty, to staff, and to students, and watching them really walk the journey, whether it was in class or in the hallways or in the dining hall. Um, what was life like at Letourneau? We, my wife and I got to experience that together. What really uh, struck us was um, people walking their, their journey in Christ in a very transparent way, meaning um, I may know Christ, uh, but I'm struggling with my walk. I may know Christ and I'm doing really great with my walk. I may not know Christ at all. And, and all those people are here, and it's like a cross-section of humanity, which is fantastic. We wanted that, and that's what we were used to in the Air Force. Um, but the transparency of folks really impressed us. Um, people were just honest about where they were at. Um, and so Dr. Anson was willing to accept a transcript like ours and give us a, a, chan a chance to do this. Um, so that was about two and a half years ago. And I can say without hesitation that it's went way beyond what um, those two days, uh, what I imagined during those two days in terms of how um, transparent students are, how interested they are in honoring Christ, and how interested they are in their chosen field of study. And I have to mention that that's something else that really uh, hooked my wife and I is, is the, the Laterno mission statement. Go claim every workplace in every nation as a mission field. We, my wife and I, actually tried to treat the Air Force that way. God had put on my heart years ago that the Air Force was a mission field. It's 300,000 people that are just, they have needs, so treat it that way. And so we tried to do that in our last 10 years of the Air Force. That, that statement itself just hooked me right off the bat. If that's Letourneau, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of that. And so um, we, we totally resonate with uh, what Letourneau is trying to do. And the chance we have, and I say we a lot because I, I really bring my wife into this journey. Um, she was a big part of the Air Force journey, and we wanted to invest in students together here. So for two and a half years, we've been doing that <clears throat> through a class called Cornerstones. We actually teach that together. That's a freshman uh, college transition course, study habits, cutting ties with your family, learning um, time management, um, health habits, a lot of things like that we do together as a couple. Um, getting them grounded in their uh, faith journey at Laterno, we do that together. Um, she's connected with all my advisees too. We love to host them over at the home. Um, and what I'm finding uh, has really come to life about Letourneau in the last two years is, is um, relationships with individual people. Uh, and I mean faculty, staff, and students that you really do walk life with. Um, you don't teach a class here. You, sh you do class, but you do life. Class is just one of those things. Um, so is um, having them over at your home. So, so is being a part of a, of a society on base or an, another club on, on, I say base because the Air Force, um, a society on campus or another club on campus, a prayer group on campus. You're doing all of life together. Going to somebody's wedding who you taught in a class. Um, preparing, do wedding counseling with another group that you work with. Um, all those things come together here at a place called Laterno. So it's, it's where life has lived for four years for somebody. And we want to, to live all aspects of that life with them, not just their academic degree. Uh, so that's been a great joy for Dana and I. And um, I would say we, we are more, <laughs> I've actually asked her this, we're more um, filled with a sense of purpose and contentment doing what we do here than I think we ever have been in our life. And, and that's a powerful statement because the Air Force was extremely meaningful. Um, and it was a, an extremely large chunk of our life. And it had some aspects to it that will never be topped. But it didn't have um, Christ at the center of everything that they did. That, that part was um, there, but it wasn't at the center. And so that's what Laterno does bring to the table. You can actually wrap everything you do here around your faith in Christ, which is what he wants us to do with our lives. And so it's a good place to practice what you're gonna do when you graduate from here that Laterno mission statement of claiming every workplace and every nation has a mission field.